Global warming has an evil twin you might not have heard of, ocean acidification. Today's rates of ocean acidification resulting from human activities have major consequences for marine life, coastal communities, and the amount of CO2 in our atmosphere. To start, let's take a little trip back to high school chemistry class. Remember the pH scale? It measures the acidity of a substance on a scale of 0 to 14. The lower the number, the more acidic. The higher the number, the more basic or alkaline. Generally, ocean water is a little alkaline, but our present-day oceans are getting more acidic. This isn't a phenomenon that humans can feel or see, but it's literally changing the chemistry of the ocean, and animals are not used to that. Here's how it works. The ocean is kind of like a sponge. It absorbs nearly 30% of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. This is the ocean doing us a big favor, especially as the concentration of CO2 is the highest it's been in 800,000 years. When carbon dioxide is absorbed by the ocean, a chain of chemical reactions takes place. One result of these chemical reactions is that carbonate ions become less available in the ocean. And here's why that matters. The most direct effect of ocean acidification is on marine calcifiers. These are organisms like oysters, mussels, shellfish, and coral. Marine calcifiers use carbonate ions to build strong shells, skeletons, and hard parts. Emily Osborne, a scientist who studies ocean acidification, told me a little more. It's reducing what I like to refer to as the building blocks that marine calcifiers or things that grow shells can use um, to build their shells. As the ocean becomes more acidic, fewer carbonate ions are available, making the shells of these animals weak, brittle and deformed. Ocean acidification also has indirect effects on marine life. Larval or early life stages of fish can be particularly vulnerable to ocean acidification, so they don't grow as quickly or grow as large. They normally would under higher pH conditions. We also see that the olfactory system in fish, which is essentially like their ability to smell, um, can be impacted in some species, so they're not able to um, find food or avoid predators as effectively as they can. Ocean acidification is an emerging problem that's already impacting the seafood industry. Animals like oysters are struggling to build their shells and survive because their habitats are becoming corrosive. Chefs and seafood purveyors are particularly concerned because of acidification's effects on the marine food chain. Anyone who works in a shellfish industry is very familiar with ocean acidification, the impacts that it has on their business. They change their business practices and the way that they um, like grow their organisms because of ocean acidification. Scientists say small organisms at the bottom of the food chain, called pteropods, are the power bars of the sea, but pteropods are also struggling to survive as a result of an increasingly acidic ocean. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the pH of surface ocean water has dropped by 0.1 unit since the Industrial Revolution. That might not sound like a lot, but the pH scale is logarithmic, not linear. So that 0.1 drop equates to a 30% increase in acidity. Just like atmospheric carbon dioxide has fluctuated in the Earth's past, so has ocean acidification. But the fluctuations in the past have taken place over long periods of time, allowing marine life to adapt. As today's rates of emissions continue to increase, scientists project that by the end of this century, surface ocean waters could be 150% more acidic since the Industrial Revolution. Scientists have begun to differentiate ocean acidification from coastal acidification, because the latter is also affected by other variables like agricultural runoff. Osborne conducted a study published in December 2019, which concluded that California coastal waters are acidifying twice as fast as the global ocean average. To come to this conclusion, Osborne and her team studied a fossil record containing 100 years worth of shells of a marine calcifier called planktonic foraminifera. So I was looking at a sediment core, which essentially was like going through pages of a book layer by layer down the sediment core and looking at these fossil shells. And what the fossil shells were showing me was that they were literally thinning as a result of ocean acidification. So they were 20% thinner in the year 2000 relative to the ones that I found in the year 1900. The period Osborne studied is important because it represents a time that humans became more dependent on carbon and emitted more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The study that I conducted in the California ecosystem 
suggests that the pH over just a 100 year period during my study had declined 0.22 units, so more than twice as much in a shorter period of time. Osborne and her team noticed some variability as a result of a naturally occurring phenomenon called coastal upwelling, which is when ocean currents bring colder, more acidic water from deeper in the ocean to the surface. Coastal upwelling is a process that makes the California current ecosystem an extraordinarily vibrant and diverse ecosystem. It brings a lot of nutrients to the surface ocean, and we have vast fisheries because of that process. But at the same time, those nutrient-rich waters that are upwelled along the coast um, also have a lot of CO2 in them as well. And so in this part of the world, we have a bottom-up stress from upwelling, um, which the system is acclimated to, it's normal, these organisms are used to this variability, but we also have this long-term stress that's coming from the top down from the atmosphere that's imprinting on that variability. So, in short, human activity is making the world's oceans more acidic, which is then exacerbated by natural phenomena like coastal upwelling. The coasts along the east side of both the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans also experience coastal upwelling, making them vibrant with life and nutrients, but also victim to this double whammy effect. Like the other effects of climate change we see every day, stopping acidification requires reducing our reliance on fossil fuels and cutting back on carbon emissions. The NOAA released a plan for how it will study ocean acidification over the next decade. It includes predicting changes in the ocean and how those changes will impact marine ecosystems. Ultimately, the NOAA hopes its research will help communities and economies that are affected by ocean acidification.